Hey everyone, welcome back to Ali Bakes. I'm Eliza Saw, and today we're exploring Instagram trends. And what I mean by Instagram trend is cereal. So I decided why not try to make cookie cereal just like I've been seeing. Not only did I make one type of classic cookie to be cereal, I also went ahead and made two other kinds of cereals which are going to be sort of like brownie type and the other one is going to be a little bit more healthier sort of based on the traditional oatmeal cookie but with a few twists for you health nuts out there so before we get into it and before i show you how i make all these don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already if you're new to my channel i do baking videos every single week if it's not a baking video it's a food related video and it's just all good fun so feel free to check it out and let's get into the tutorial the first thing that we're going to do is actually not make our batter i actually did a little bit of prep work and because i included a bit of chocolate in each of these recipes i decided to take a huge chunk of 70 percent dark chocolate and cut it up into tiny pieces of shavings and tiny chunks if you don't want to do this i totally understand you can definitely use mini chocolate chips but do your best to get mini Size chocolate chips. The reason I cut up my chocolate chunk is because I really just wanted to have a very nice even distribution of chocolate all throughout the cookies. Since they're going to be so small, I don't want them to lack any of the fillings or toppings. So now we can make our cookie batter. So we're going to start with the classic chocolate chip cookie. And for this, you are going to need some soft butter, brown sugar, two eggs, some all purpose flour, some baking powder, salt vanilla extract, and chocolate. You might be wondering what's so different between this type of cookie batter versus a regular type of cookie batter. And what I've changed really is just the amount of structure it's going to have. I don't want them to be super soft or super chewy. I actually wanted them to be a bit on the drier, a little more tougher side so that I can really withstand the milk. You can think of it kind of similar to a biscotti type of cookie. So to put it together, we're gonna cream our butter and our brown sugar. And once that's nice and mixed and smooth, we're going to add in our eggs. This is my first cookie batter, so I ended up adding both eggs at the same time, and it turns out mixing it makes it a little difficult. So add an egg at a time. Then we're gonna add in our vanilla extract, and then in a separate bowl, we've got all our dry ingredients, so the flour, the baking powder, the salt, and we're just gonna mix that together with a whisk, and then we're going to dump it in, mix it until it's nice and combined. <clears throat> combined and then we can add in our dark chocolate chips what i'm going to do with this batter is just put it into some plastic wrap and let it chill in the fridge do your best to put it into a rectangle shape and i'll get to that in a bit but put that into the fridge for overnight or into the freezer if you're planning to keep it for longer than that and forget about it now we can make the other batters if you want to skip ahead and only do one type of cookie i totally get it you don't have to refrigerate it overnight if you really want to get started on it you could just pop it in the freezer for about two to three hours just until it's nice and stiff then we can move on but before we do move on i'll show you how to make the other cookies so i'm going to start now with the double chocolate cookie cereal and i i love it it's honestly very brownie like it's delicious and chocolatey but not too sweet and what you need for this is going to be again some soft butter some brown sugar and then we're going to add our two eggs for this i'm adding a little bit of coffee and vanilla extract but all the ingredients and the amounts will be in the blog post listed in the description box as always the dry ingredients is going to be some all-purpose flour and some cocoa powder, of course, for the double chocolate. We're going to be using baking soda for this recipe because the cocoa and the brown sugar make this dough quite acidic and therefore will let it react with the baking soda and baking powder is not needed. So don't forget your salt and the chocolate chips and just mix it all together and do the same. We're just going to pop it into some plastic wrap and then put it into the fridge let it chill and lastly i'm going to show you how to make the oatmeal type of cookie that is sort of healthy i'd like to think i based it off the traditional oatmeal type of cookie but i did not add raisins we're just going to take some instant or rolled oats pop it into a blender or food processor and just blitz it until it's a little bit more fine it doesn't have to be a super fine powder just as long as the chunks are small enough but I did not mind having the oat chunks itself 
Another good thing to mention about this recipe is that you can swap out the butter for coconut oil and make it dairy free. What I used was some soft butter, a mixture of coconut sugar and brown sugar, but coconut sugar on its own works fine. Then I added my two eggs and then I've added my oat flour, my baking powder and salt. And then I also decided to add about a teaspoon of cinnamon and then I also added about a tablespoon of flaxseed. So then we're gonna add in the chocolate chips and the walnuts and just mix it all together. If you by chance wanted to make this egg free, you definitely could. You would just have to replace it with flaxseed hydrated with water and I will put all the substitutions and everything in the blog post below. Um, so I mixed together my batter and then I decided that I wanted to add a little more moisture into it because I do want this to be a slightly more chewy cookie. I don't want it to turn out like granola where it's hard and crunchy. So I added two tablespoons of milk. You can use any type of milk. You could use almond milk, macadamia milk, coconut milk, the list goes on. Um, I actually used a little bit of macadamia milk because I have some in my fridge and I just felt like adding it in. But like I said, all the ingredients, the substitutions, and the amounts will be in the link below in the description box as always. What we're gonna do is pop that into some plastic wrap as well, chill it in the fridge like all the other doughs, and then now we can get started on baking. So this part I found I had the most trouble with because I just really couldn't figure out the sizing, but what I decided that was the easiest way to do was to basically just take all of my chunks of dough and then cut them into small squares. What really helps to cut this is if you occasionally dip your knife in some cold water because then it won't stick to the knife, but don't do it too much because then you will soak your dough in water and that's just not fun. So the initial bake was 10 minutes, 325 for all of them, um, or just until it's matte on the top and golden on the sides. I decided I really want to dry it out a little bit more just so it can definitely stand up to the milk and doesn't become too soggy. So I put them all back onto trays and then I popped it back into the oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit, so a lower temperature. And I put it in for about eight to 10 minutes just until it was kind of dried out. And how I tested that was by cutting a cookie in half. And I used the classic chocolate chip cookie, so it was the easiest to tell. And if it's cut in half, you can see the moisture in the middle of the cookie. And once it's all dried out, that's when you know it's good to take out of the oven and it's nice and crisp. And it will be able to stand up to the milk, which is what we want. <laughs> And that was my experience with cookie cereal. To be quite honest, I stopped eating it in a bowl with milk afterwards and just started taking it from the bag and eating it with coffee in the morning, which is still, I mean, great. What I really wanted to do was store these in some, oh, shit. my camera dead. <laughs> What I really wanted to do was just store my cookie cereals in cute little jars and just display them like you would with cereal, but I don't have any free containers. So I just stored them all in Ziploc bags and it works out fine as long as it's airtight, nicely sealed. So they're great as cereal and they're also great as little snacks. You should definitely try it out. If there are any more Instagram trends you would like to see me try, then don't forget to leave a comment below telling me 
all about it. These cereals were great. That distribution of chocolate is divine. And then we've got the oatmeal ones, which really just honestly tastes like a great oatmeal cookie. It's actually my family's favorite. So if you're gonna try one out of all, I highly recommend that one too. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all next week because I do baking and food related videos every single week. So don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye. I love bangs, but I also hate bangs because I just, they just bug me so much.